Hey, hey everyone, Sleepy Reader here. Um, just gonna show you some of the stuff I got at Rose City Comic Con a few, well, like a week and a half ago now. Um, you may have seen my other video about chatting with Matt about it. You may have heard us talking some more with Longbox Review on his recent episode on his podcast, um, where we chat with him at a bar about the con. Um, so first up, I got the last issue of Epic. I need to complete my run of Epic comics. I'd searched most of the comic book stores around me, so I was glad to find this, even though it was a bit higher than I normally pay for Epic magazine. Um, glad to find it at the con. Uh, a lot of the... There were some dealers with outrageously high prices, and then there were a few that I found. I didn't really look that hard this year. But a few that I found with some really good prices. And uh, the shtick that a lot of the places with the be slightly better prices have is it's 50% off the um, sticker price. And then there was one place, uh, I Like Comics, in fact, that had 70% off the sticker price or $1 if the sticker price was $10 or lower. So these all come from that range of 50% off or more. Um, so kind of on the run, filling out runs, I always grab House of Secrets when I find them to be affordable. So this was, I remember this was a 70% off one. Um, so always glad to find those cheaply and, and put them into my collection. House, House of Mystery also, um, I don't know, what's 70% of 12? <laughs> it's probably, so this cost me... What uh three fifty maybe. Uh so yeah, uh two hundred page ones of House of Mystery, two twenty eight that one was, the other one was uh two twenty seven. And then later on a fifty cent House of Mystery. It was to go, went on for a long time, number two eighty nine of House of Mystery. Oh, and these I don't find as often, Strange Adventures. And here's a gigantic Strange Adventures. I assume this is from like 1970 or 71 when they did the large size, um, the large size DC comics. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, Strange Adventures 226 and Strange Adventures 227. That's a cool cover. I assume that's Kubert. Kubert, Kubert, Kubert. Is there a signature? I don't see it. It must be Kubert. And then I found only one Lois Lane this time in the affordable range that I didn't already have. I have a lot of Lois Lanes now. And here's a bunch of Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. This is a 12 center, number 116. This is a comic that went on for a long time that now seems like who would possibly be interested in this. But these are super fun to read for me now. I would have hated them when I was a kid, ironically. This almost looks like a Neil Adams cover. I'm not sure. Jimmy Olsen, also a 12 center, 117. Sorry for These are wrinkly bags. They're, these are all going in Mylar eventually. Another one that, could this be a Neil Adams cover? I don't know. Sometimes the covers are, they'll be inked by Neil Adams. Um, a 15 center, Jimmy Olsen's Death Trick. I feel like I might have read this maybe reprinted somewhere else because sometimes you get those giant size ones and they'll have reprints of things. But I think there's one where he tries to trick Superman into believing he's dying and telling him his secret identity. Um, if this is the same one, he doesn't actually tell him. He can hear his heartbeat and tell he's perfectly healthy. Ooh, a Superman robot? Is that what, the Computer Man of Steel from Jimmy Olsen number, well, another 15 center. It's hard to see the number. 130. Um, is that a Murphy Anderson cover or something along those lines? This might be Neil Adams. Jimmy Olsen. Is this, um, I wonder if this is Jack Kirby. This is Jack Kirby inside. It was only $6, so only $3. Um, or maybe it was only $1. It depends on who I got it from. But um, so there might be some damage on the inside. 
so yeah, that's Jimmy Olsen from the Jack Kirby era, but with a, what looks like a Neil Adams cover, number 136. And then post Jack Kirby, 20 center, so early 70s, 153. And I accidentally got two copies of this one. So um, I don't know. Some lucky person will get a copy of Jimmy Olsen, 150, 153. Oh, and these are really cool. I don't know what what to find inside. It says Ditko cover and art. Um, Ghostly Haunts from Charlton. Um, I really love the way that cover looks, even though it's, I don't know. Oh, and I love this one even more. Another Ditko cover. It just says Ditko cover on the label, so maybe there's no Ditko interior work. But I really loved this cover. So I kind of paid a lot for that for me, $8 for one issue. Um, or seven fifty, eight dollars no, $8. Okay, and then I couldn't resist, because I think these were a dollar a piece, Dagar the Invincible. Um, love these painted covers from Gold Key. I, rem I, I have a few others of these. This is Gold Key's attempt at doing Conan, written by Don Glutt, art by an interesting but very different kind of Italian artist. I think he's Italian. Um, and it, it looks kind of nice, but I don't know if it has, it doesn't have so much impact as you want with a sort of sword and sorcery kind of story. Uh, looks a little bit like uh, art you might find by Spanish artists in Creepy and Eerie at times. So I got that Dagar. Not all of them have numbers. Does this one have a number on it? Well, oh, the. The seller mentioned that it's number eight. And this one is number 10, another great painted cover. It'd be great just to have, I don't know, a coffee table book of all kinds of great gold key painted covers. Um, so that was number 10. And then this one has no number on it. I could open it up and look in the Indicia to find out the number. Another fun cover. They really, they must have spent all their money on the covers at Gold Key. And then I filled out, I think I just maybe have one more Amazing Adventures Kill Raven issue to get a hold of, and then I'll have the whole run. This is number 33, and this is number 37. So one is actually, this one is a Romita cover inked by Craig Russell, which is an interesting combination. And then this is a Craig Russell cover, not one of his strongest. He has some other really great covers. Oh, and here's one. I'm surprised I haven't already bought this. Maybe I have, and it's just not in my CLZ, but it was only $3. This is a cover that I used to see advertised in a lot of comics that I was getting as a kid. And as a kid, this image just like drove me crazy in terms of like this was my dream sword and sorcery picture that I wanted to you know, that, that maybe only appeared in my dreams, except it was on a cover by Gil Kane. Um, Valley of the Worm, which is a uh, famous Robert E. Howard story that they adopted in this issue, Supernatural Thrillers number three. And um, yeah, I, I think I even have a thing where I talk about it in my Gil Kane video that I did about five or six years ago. Wow, for a second, uh, was my imagination. For a second, I thought I saw Howard the Duck hiding somewhere in the cover in this pile of bodies, but it's just flashing things back and forth, my weird imagination. I just love this cover. I don't know why. And it just was, it was, I must have got a lot of comics the month this came out or the month before this came out advertising this comic. And it drove me crazy as a kid that I would never get to read it. Here's a Conan. I did get this issue as a kid. I remember specifically that it's the only issue of Conan drawn by Rich Buckler. So I wanted to own, it, own a copy of it again. I was happy to find a cheap copy of Defenders number three. This either cost me $5 or $1. I'm not sure which. Um, but this is, it's a Gil Kane cover, but I think it's a Sal, it will be Sal Buscema on the inside. We got some Silver Surfer there. That's always good in the Defenders. Then I filled out some more. I don't think I've shared with you all the Captain Americas I've been buying. Maybe I should do that in another video. 
I've been trying to get uh, all the Sal Buscema Captain Americas, and there's probably some non-Sal Buscema mixed in here, but these are filling out some of my run uh, that I already have bought a lot of that stuff. Um, I had it under under the guest bedroom bed here for quite a while, um, but then I finally put it in a box, but I might do a video about that. So that's uh, 177 with a character named Lucifer. Um, and 181, kind of a cool Gil Kane cover, as Gil Kane covers almost are. I wonder who inked that. There's no no signature here. Oh, there's Captain America and Nomad. That's the new Captain America there. And then Death of a Hero, 183. I can't remember if this guy really dies, the one who tries to fill in for Captain America once Captain America, once Steve Rogers becomes Nomad. The big aim is to get everything that Steve Englehart wrote about Captain America, but also as all the Sal Buscema also. And some of this will not be Sal Buscema, though I remember uh, Alan Weiss did a few issues, and then there were a number of issues, but unfortunately, by Frank Robbins. Somehow I feel like the inside of this might be Frank Robbins. There's a nice Gil Kane cover where the Red Skull is trying to kill uh, Sharon Carter, I guess. Number 184. And 185. Definitely remember this cover from my childhood. And then I bought some Jack Kirby Captain Americas, which I found out when I came home. I, I, I didn't check my CLZ app for these, and it turned out I owned two of these already. Plus, I own them all in an omnibus, but you can never have enough Jack Kirby. So that is 205, 231, and... Oops, they were out of, oh, that was 211, not 231. And this is 213. That guy looks cool, the guy in blue there. I like that. Oh, and then these were fun. Somehow I normally don't see these at a price I want to pay for them, but I love this cover. This looks like a John Buscema cover. Um, so I paid $6 or less for this, I'm not sure. Submariner number 20. I'm hoping there's Sal Buscema artwork, or, or I hope, hoping there's some Buscema artwork on the inside. And um, oh, this is this picture is really familiar. I think they reuse this pose of Submariner in some publicity material. Number thirty, guest starring Captain Marvel, and a John Severin cover, or at least John Severin inked. Um, number thirty, thirty-eight, yeah. I love these 15 centers, <laughs> maybe partially because they were what was around just before I started reading comics, because I came in when they bumped up the price to 25 cents and then really got going in comics at the 20 cent mark. But so I love how the box looks on the, the corner box on the 15 centers for some reason. And speaking of 15 centers, here's Amazing Adventures featuring the Inhumans and Black Widow. And what grabbed me about this was the Neil Adams cover, of course. I'm not sure if there's Neil Adams art inside or maybe Don Heck art inside. I'm not sure. But that seemed half of that or less. <laughs> it, so I paid $5 or less for that. That seemed like a good price to me for, for me to buy Amazing Adventures. Another Neil Adams cover, Black Bolt versus Thor. I'm, I'm going to read these pretty soon. And then I, I, I pick up old Thor's when I can, again, even though I have them in various reprints, um, this is a, here's a 12 center with Thor fighting the destroyer. What is it? Uh, number 151. And I, I guess I want to get all the John Buscema Fantastic Four, and maybe the Rich Buckler Fantastic Four too. So these are f starting to fill that out. Um, this is a wonderful cover from the, what do you call that? The picture window cover period. I love that period too. Um, so, something exciting about having this frame and then when the characters kind of go out of the frame a little bit. Thunder in the ruins and the thing fights alone. Oh, and anytime Lockjaw shows up, I love that. Love Crystal. Love her hair. Do they, do they still do that with her hair now? I don't think they do.
and here we've got another Fantastic Four, which is an issue that I noticed was also made up part of that uh, Galactus-sized Galactic book, the Behold Galactus, bigger than a uh, artist edition um, book that I did also made a video of fairly recently. Oh, and this, we got Richard Nixon on the cover. Uh, how many times do you, can you say that? Um, I don't know why now, with all the years gone by, I love the appearance of Richard Nixon in Marvel Comics. Um, I don't know what, I, I think I felt weird about that as a kid when he would show up occasionally. Or, I don't know if you guys remember, in uh, Warlock on Counter-Earth, there'd be a character that obviously was a stand-in for Richard Nixon, who eventually turned out to be the man-wolf in disguise. But... Um, that always jarred me as a kid to see Richard Nixon or uh, that kind of... I don't know if Jimmy Carter also showed up in comics back then. Um, I think Nixon was kind of fun to draw. And maybe that's why they put him in. So I also got this hardback of that's kind of the thing... It reprints a couple of Stan Lee written Fantastic Four, including the um, sort of infamous one where they cut up Jack Kirby's pictures and combine them with stuff by Romita and John Buscema, I think. And so it has their recreation of what the original Jack Kirby would look like, and then it reprints the actual issue that came out. This would be after Jack Kirby left Marvel Comics, I believe when they reused his, that issue. Um, and then it has a whole thing, of a very long, a much longer piece by John Romita and Stan Lee. I did not know that, John Romita Jr. and Stan Lee, and I did not know those two ever collaborated. So I'm mildly curious about that. But this hardback was in a box of $5 hardback, so I just couldn't resist that. And then, oh, here. <laughs> This is funny, I'm not sure why, but Matt, Agent 42Q, gave a Wednesday serial, gave me this recent issue of Heavy Metal, a fetish issue. I guess maybe he gave it to me as a bit jokingly, a bit tongue in cheek. Or maybe he just thought that I like Heavy Metal more than he does, so he would give it to me. It does look pretty cool. I've been meaning to catch up on it. Whoa, okay, pretend you didn't see that. Matt, I blame you. Of course, Matt is not watching this video. Oh, I uh, talked with Malachi or Malachi Ward. He seemed very nervous when I spoke to him, or very not like he had something else on his mind, and it was an awkward conversation. But I bought expansion from him. He and uh, Matt Sheehan, or however you pronounce his name, collaborate. They they both write and draw. I think Malak. Malachi does more of the inking and less of the penciling, but I'm not sure. And he said this was an older story, although printed more recently than some of the other things. He's had some, they, uh, the, the team has had some stuff out from Image, uh, like in Island, and then printed as a graphic novel. And before then, I think they were kind of self-publishing. And this is from kind of one of the artier publishers of comics called Ad House. I wonder if they publish other things besides comics also. But that was one of those weird encounters with, <laughs> with artists and creators where I say, why? I'm a reader. I don't need to talk to these people. Um, but there you are at the convention. What are you supposed to do? Um, actually, quite pleasant was meeting this fellow, Roderick Constance. Matt, Matt kind of discovered him, and then we both chatted with him for a bit. Matt bought one of his comics. I bought this other one, Gradient. It's issue zero. So I'm hoping I like it, and he'll keep doing it. I think he might have said it was a that he planned four or five issues. He does the art, coloring, and writing himself. Looked pretty good to me. Um, I particularly liked the coloring. Some of the pages, the art is very good, and others, I think he, like Matt and I were, we, he also had the original art there, and Matt and I were you know, telling him how great he was, and he ought to be working for Image. But looking at it now, he said, well, I need, I need a little more time to improve. And I think he was right. I mean, I think he, he's a very good artist. We'll have to see how he is uh, on, as a writer, but uh, maybe he need, he's, uh, he's on the cusp of becoming 
at the higher level. Um, so he was he seemed like a really cool, nice guy. He lives in San Francisco, so I hope things go really well for him. And then there were these, I'm embarrassed now, but I talked to the artist of these saltwater comics on the first day there. I meant to buy more more you know self-published indie kind of things but i i just didn't get around to talking to as many of the artists with their tables there um this sounded kind of cool but i can't remember what he told me about it it's science fiction um and uh yeah i can't remember but i've got three issues so i should be able to tell you about it sometime when i read it my daughter really liked this artist so we bought this mini print from her um let's see Oh, and here's her card. Her name is Amanda Lee. I love the picture on the card. My daughter liked this picture a lot. She had a lot of um, paintings that seemed kind of inspired by anime, um, but that looked really cool. And we were talking about her, about how she became an artist and stuff. I don't know if she does comics. But, um, yeah, so just appealed to, the, to my young daughter. And also for her... Um, she took the, she went to this comic art camp. You can see a video I did about that. Um, run by Randy Emberlin, who used to be a inker at Marvel, or that's what he's best known for. I think he inked a lot of Mark Bagley's Spider-Man and other things like that, especially in the 90s. So anyone who went to his camp, any kid who went to his camp and came by at Rose City Comic Con, got a free print. He's had a lot of students because I think my daughter was like number 41 or something like that. We went by on Sunday. And so she picked out this print of Sandman because Sandman's kind of a joke between her and I about um, uh, what, uh, are talking about silly villains from comic books. And then we also saw this picture of Supergirl. And we couldn't resist that. So we bought this. These are prints bought this print for five dollars um, which seemed like a good deal and this one he inked but didn't draw I think the other one he drew himself oh no it's got kind of a crease in it dang well I don't think she'll care much and finally um, another self-publisher was doing these Oz books of their own and that's a smart idea you can never ha get too much Oz and you can make up your own stories and there's there's no copyrights involved so I'm looking forward to us reading this or her reading it and me reading it separately or together, we'll see. Um, nice art, nice format. This was the first of two volumes, I believe. So that was cool. Um, I gotta run. I gotta go pick up my daughter. Whoop! There goes the mic. There goes the microphone. I gotta pick up Quacking Duck from um, her drama drama club, her after school drama club. So I'll talk to you all later.